Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Now, something happened on Friday uh, that is very unusual, and that is that there was a full sitting of the Houses of Parliament. Uh, the Commons, in particular, uh, had a full sitting. Uh, and they were doing so so they could get a bit of legislation through uh, that basically everyone thought was important. And this is all to do with um, worker protection. It's part of the worker protection bill. Uh, and it was particularly the sexual harassment at work part of this. Um, and it was very notable that one particular party uh, did not turn up. They basically just went no. And there was no one sitting in their benches. That party, of course, is the SNP. Um, and of course, it's not surprising that they didn't want to show up to have a debate about sexual harassment at work. Let's face it, when it comes to that kind of thing, they are the past masters. One only has to look at Jordan Linden, at Mark Kerr, at uh, Patrick Grady, all these people, touchy-feely with other people's kids. And so there was no way that they were going to attend. They'd have been too embarrassed because they know if their asses had touched the green leather, everyone in that house would have been calling them out and saying, well, why are you here to debate this when you're the worst people for actually doing it? So it's not surprising, but it goes to show how little they actually are concerned with this sort of thing going on. Uh, and that's why they dared actually discuss it. Now, I think it's pretty disgusting myself, um, you know, to, to, to actually do this and not protect people. But anyway, we'll take a look at it, see what's going on. Now, I am surprised Patrick Grady didn't turn up to try and vote this down because, as we know, he's someone who does enjoy a good bit of sexual harassment at work. Uh, he likes touching up other people's young young, yeah, young sons. Uh, and so, especially in a work setting, you know, so uh, I'm surprised he wasn't there sort of saying his piece on his, you know, his views on this particular subject. Uh, but um, the other's not turning up. You know, uh, you know, it, it, uh, what they embarrassed? Are they are they sitting there uh, too embarrassed to turn up, or is it that they don't feel that they can possibly vote against these things or have a view on these things, given their party's sort of massive, um, you know, problem? Should we say problem from uh, from everyone else? Not a problem within the SNP. Normal behaviour within the SNP. After all, it's filled with pervs, pedos, and predators. But for everyone outside the SNP, of course, it is a massive problem. It's a weird party, isn't it, that they like this sort of thing. Anyway, uh, SNP MPs snub additional Friday sitting to debate new law on sexual harassment in the workplace. What does it tell you about the SNP, eh? Campaigners hailed a huge day and a big step forward in the fight for equality, but there was nobody from the SNP present to debate the new worker protection bill during an extra day sitting on Friday. Uh, and it's very rare that they do this. They only do it for very special reasons or national emergencies, things like that. that it's, not un, it's not unheard of, but it is unusual. Uh, anyway, a rare Friday sitting of the House of Commons took place last week so MPs could put the final touches on a new law on sexual harassment in the workplace. But despite the legislation being UK-wide, uh, nobody from the SNP was there to take part. So when, they, when the SNP complained, oh, look, Westminster's doing this, Westminster's doing that, well, they can hardly moan if they can't even be bothered to go to Westminster to debate the laws that's going to apply to people. And so it, it just destroys any credibility that the SNP have when they complain about UK-wide laws impinging on the lives of Scots. They have an option and an opportunity of going there and putting their say in, and they choose not to do it. it, it, it hypocritical tots, aren't they? What an absolute bunch of... Hypocritical twats, they truly are. Anyway, the Worker Protection Bill will introduce a preventative duty to force employers to stop sexual harassment from happening in their workplaces in the first place. It was hailed by campaigners as a huge day in the fight for women's rights. Christine Jardine, Lib Dem MP for Edinburgh West, was among the MPs who did take the opportunity to stay in London for an additional day to debate the bill. I will point out, um, it's not just women's rights, this issue, uh, because sometimes uh, that harassment goes the other way. It could be man-on-man -man action. It could be woman-on-man action. It could be, you know, a female boss um, doing it to a, a male uh, underling, for example. So it isn't just one way. It is, you know, universal. So just clarify that. Uh, anyway, Christine Jardine, Lib Dem MP for Edinburgh West, was among the MPs who did take the opportunity to stay in London 
for an additional day to debate the bill, brought by her party colleague, Wera, I think, think it's pronounced Wera Hobhouse. I'm not sure on the pronunciation, never heard that name before. Uh, the Bath MP said, I am grateful for the government's patience and their support for the part of the bill that we can agree is so important, which is to create a preventative duty on employers. If the bill passes today, it will be a good day and I hope everyone will be able to support the amendments so it can pass. Um, and it's, it is a, it's a genuinely a good bill. It just, you know, helps people, it stops people being abused and I'm fine with that. I don't have any issue with what I consider to be a good bill and that is one of them. Uh, during the debate, Tory backbencher Danny Kruger warned the bill would set a dangerous precedent where comments made during overheard discussions could lead to a firm facing legal action. Uh, however, Ms Jardine said that women and young people can often feel undermined, damaged, bullied and harassed by, as a result of exactly that sort of casual conversation that they overhear in a canteen or the office. Well, to be fair, if you, if you do fancy someone in your office, for example, you tell them it's not an issue. Go, excuse me, I find you very attractive. I'd like to ask you out on a date. And they can say yes, and that's very fine. Or they can say, no, thank you. And that's fine as well. It's their choice. They're not obliged. And you move on. You don't sit, and I'd hate it, and I'm sure that most people don't sit there and go, oh, look at that old old Susan from accounts. She's got a fight pay. I would, I'd do her. You, you don't expect that in a professional setting. You know, down the pub, different matter, but not in an office not or in a factory or anything like that. It's, it's just not right, is it? Um, decent, bit of, bit of decency about yourselves, guys. Come on. Not just guys, is it? It's women as well. We all know women are like it. Oh, right, there's old Dave. Yeah, he's handsome fecker, isn't he? Yeah, do him. Things I'd like to hear. Um, anyway, Miss Jardine said, I've oh, just done that bit, sorry. I, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, anyway, the bill passed its final stage in the Commons, which means it will become law before the end of the year. Uh, Jemima Olkowski, I think it's pronounced, Chief Executive of the Fawcett Society said, this bill is a big step forward and it is a testament to the power of Fawcett and our members and allies working together to bring out changes that makes the workplaces work for women and not just women as I say it can be um, yeah, yeah, particularly young people but it, it applies to everyone you, nobody wants it nobody needs it uh, however there was nobody present from the SNP to take part in the debate or subsequent debates about the COVID-19 vaccine damages payments bill or the BBC licence fee non-payment decriminalisation for over 75s bill which means if that goes through that's a brilliant step as well because if that goes through and it's decriminalized it means anyone who's over 75 who doesn't buy a tv license cannot be prosecuted and then once that's brought in then you can use gen then you can use the uh, 2010 uh, equality act and say well actually if you're allowing it for over 75s why aren't you allowing it for under 75s age discrimination and we can finally hopefully decriminalize not having a television bill and then none of us can pay it and we can get rid of the bloody bbc and their lefty mantra and claptrap uh, anyway the house of commons only sits on a friday to consider private members bill with 13 scheduled during the 2022-23 session as well as the late edition of friday october the 20th just gone um it also sits in place times like of warfare or things like that it's not just private members bills uh, anyway, Scottish MPs typically return north of the border on a Thursday evening in order to spend the day in their constituency on Friday ahead of the weekend. Former Commons leader Ian Blackford, who lives on Sky, has complained how he leaves London at 6pm on Thursday and I get home between 2 and 5am on a Friday morning. Well, I can't see how it takes that long. Um, I'm sure Tubby can get a flight, can't he? Uh, in 2014, the SNP was slammed after four of its then six MPs failed to show up for a Friday vote on the so-called bedroom tax. And then they moaned about it. They couldn't even be bothered to turn up for it and they moaned about it. A bit hypocritical, isn't it? Angus McNeil, Angus Robertson, Stuart Hosey and Pete Wishart were all absent with Wishart blaming a delayed flight. If that's genuine, that's fine. That's an excuse. But the other three just went and then they moaned that this bedroom tax was brought in without their say-so. They weren't there to have a say, you know? Um, they, they, they do this all the time. They just don't care, do they? Oh, I want to go home. I want to go home. Yeah, I know it's the law. I know it's important. I want to go home. That's not it at all, is it? That's not what it is. That's what they're saying. But that's not what it is. It's sexual harassment in the workplace. <laughs> they don't want to be seen anywhere near that. Hypocritical two-faced toss pots. Anyway, coming up. Can you imagine the look of horror on their faces when they saw this private member's bill coming up? And they thought, oh, we can't be there for that one. As they look to their history and then look around. And where's Patrick? Where's Patrick Grady gone? 
and there's Patrick Grady running, running out the, out the front doors of Parliament, getting on that train, getting on the ground, get on the train, get up to Scotland as quick as he can, quick as his tiny little spoon-like legs would allow him, wouldn't he? Hey, he didn't want to be anywhere near that. Harassment, sexual harassment in the workplace. Patrick Grady. Oh, oh, I would love to have seen his face if that came up. Anyway, stop there. Just goes to show what the SNP think about that. <laughs> they can't be bothered, but they'll moan about it. They moan like hell. Oh, we didn't get a vote. <laughs> Tough. Anyway, till next time, stay safe, stay well, and don't touch anyone in the workplace. Bye.